Hi there, it's been a long, long while since we were out here with Bolton Trinity Road in the shed and uh, I haven't been idle in all that time. I have been very busy with work but um, as promised, well promised to myself but I may have mentioned it a few times before, we're going to extend around the garden and this is really so that in nice hot summer weather we can sit back in a recliner, catch some rays, sip a gin and tonic and watch trains go around the garden uh, I think it'd be quite nice um, and we're going to be a little bit unconventional, do it in double O because obviously the rest of the layout's in double O, that's all the stock I've got. It is possibly a bit on the small side for running around the garden but people have done it with great effect so I'm going to give it a go as well. So uh, what we've done outside in the garden is we've laid some foundations. Now the garden, the soil where the the track is going to go around slopes a little bit and I didn't want to have wood um, in contact with the ground because it gets rotten and I can't be bothered with that so I've built some brick piers sat on some concrete plinths and these are then going to have some mounting points for fence type posts, very short fence type posts that will then hold the wooden frame that the track will be laid on um, and um, yeah that's that's probably the easiest but easy bit is laying the track what we've got to do before then is get all this done so I've laid a lot of the brickwork um, just got to finish that off but also we have to make some holes through the wall in the shed and this can be a bit daunting to be honest when I built the layout you've probably noticed from previous videos at the very least that there are tracks that lead up to blanked off tunnel mouths um, and these were always intended as a future expansion into the garden. I had no idea at the time really of even how I was going to do it but certainly not the time scales but you know time matches, marches on and uh, here we are. So we've started cutting through the shed. I finished one of the ways through. We've literally got light at the end of the tunnel um, and um, we've protected it on the outside with a little sort of lean-to roof and this is to make sure that any driving rain can't actually play directly on the little door that we've built there because um, we don't want it leaking into the shed but we've got the double track going out there the track is actually set into fiberglass um, I've used the kind of stuff that you buy for car body repairs for dealing with holes caused by rust it's like a a ready mix fiberglass with the uh, the glass fibers in that you then add the hardener mix it up lay it and it goes off and sets solid um, as a kind of resiny plastic uh, we've set the track into this, this should stop it from moving, keep it nice and firm and protect it from any knocks when we connect up the rest of the, the garden network. And it also means you know, we can dismantle what's out there in the garden if we ever need to um, and it just removes that risk of things getting knocked. And we've also made a start on the second tunnel mouth over by the Newport Street Bridge. Um, it's a bit of a mess at the moment, we've cut through the inner skin of the shed and uh, cut our way through the insulation, pushed it all to one side quite carefully um, but we haven't gone through the outer skin just yet because until you're actually ready to build the portal on the outside and make everything watertight um, it doesn't make sense to breach that outer waterproof layer of the shed. Um, also very important to make sure that there aren't any gaps so we've got these little wooden doors on hinges that can be locked shut because uh, I don't really want people putting their hands through from outside seeing what they can steal. Um, but it also stops vermin from getting into the shed, so we don't want that either. So we've got a good tight fit and the fiberglass on the track also helps to seal up any gaps that there would be around the rails. But make sure that you get in there with something like a needle file to clear the fiberglass off the rail heads and the inner edges so that trains can, can still pass through uh, without any problems with electrical pickup or even it derailing. So that's really where we're up to. Um, still a lot to do, but we're getting there, in the words of British Rail, the 1980s adverts. And yeah, that's what I've been up to. Anyway, um, I hope this has been informative. We'll get some video shots of the light at the end of the tunnel and developments. And uh, hopefully the videos will be a little bit more frequent than they have been over the last few months. And um, maybe we'll throw in a few of those trains going by videos as well that uh, you know you love. Anyway, you take very good care of yourself. And until next time, this is me, Jennifer Kirk, saying bye for now.